Well, it looks like runway four is gonna be our departure runway today. Coming up in this fully narrated and explained video, you're going to join me on this exact Delta A321 for a flight from LaGuardia Airport down to the busiest airport in the world. Along the way, we'll pass by a JetBlue plane with an interesting history before departing off of runway four and flying the Bronx Climb, named for the borough of our initial climb. Then, we'll turn to our southwest departure fix of Lana, taking in lovely views before proceeding on course two and landing at Atlanta. This is gonna be a great video. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a flight out of LaGuardia Airport and runway four is the departure runway. I'm very excited about that. Right now as I drive to the airport, I'm thinking about our climb out. I'm anticipating a left turn via the Bronx climb with radar vectors to the Lana intersection. I'm also expecting possibly a slight delay on takeoff because when runway four is in use, runway three one is usually the arrival runway and the air traffic control in the tower often has to wait for a gap in arrivals before issuing takeoff clearance, but you never know. We may actually be able to get off right away. Let's see everybody. Come with me as I take you with me to LaGuardia Airport. In the meantime, I'm going to look around for airplanes flying over the airspace now. And I'm in luck since I'm approaching LaGuardia from the north. Here's a departure off of runway 4 flying over the Bronx. And here's another one that just turned to the north on the Bronx climb. We're going to be there soon. I can't wait. The Bronx climb requires planes to fly straight out until 500 feet, then turn to the left to the north, just like this plane is doing here. From there, the controller will disperse aircraft to their departure gates around the New York City area. My ride is arriving at LaGuardia, but I've got another L word in mind. For me, it's practically a destination that will allow for great Manhattan views on this great day. What's the L word? Lana. Yes, that's right, we're flying to Lana today. We can't land at Lana, so once we reach it, we'll continue on to Atlanta, Georgia, however. So to get to Lana, let's go inside the terminal. All right, I'm inside the terminal and I am ready to head to TSA on the upper level. Come along with me. Of course, I need to go to the large windows past TSA. And from here, I spotted this flight from Boston to LaGuardia, flying overhead the airport before descending around Manhattan, then back to Queens to land on runway 31. The window views are always great from here, but I'm especially interested in watching the A321 that I'll be taking to Lana land on runway 31. This aircraft is completing the RNAV X-ray approach to runway 31, which requires a series of five turns over waypoints in Queens before landing on the runway. Years ago, it would always be a visual approach to this runway, but it was made more precise with the addition of waypoints. This plane was delivered brand new to Delta on August 28, 2020. The tail number is November 103 Delta Yankee. Why does it end in DY? I have no idea, but if you know, let me know in the comments section below. I'm now grabbing a quick bite to eat in the Sky Club since there will be no meal service on board. Let's head on down. Okay, I'm back on the departures level. Let's head on over to the A321 right behind me. My flight will be departing from gate 78 in one of the beautiful new concourses. I love it here and the first thing I do is go check out my plane up close. This is the exact part of the fuselage that I'll be sitting in. Okay, we're all set to board. Our call sign today will be Delta 930. Delta Flight 930 is all set to accommodate you and me on board so we can get to runway 4, fly the Bronx climb, and proceed to Lana. So what are we waiting for? Let the boarding process begin. Welcome aboard the Delta Airbus A321 with service to Atlanta. I sound like I work for the airline there. I'm in the back of the plane where I'm guaranteed a well-aligned window. So there's a big lineup for runway four today. It's gonna to take a while before we're gonna get off the ground. Because the tower never knows if the arrivals of runway 31 will have to pass through the intersection of runway four, there tends to be a long line of planes waiting for takeoff because the takeoffs can only be issued when an arriving flight is guaranteed to be clear of runway 31, whether it's before or past the intersection. And there mustn't be a plane on very short final. The problem with this runway configuration is that the intersection of the landing runway and departing runways are so far down each runway, it takes some time for an aircraft to slow down before it can be determined if it will be clear of the runway before or after the intersection. So the controller always has to wait and see when the intersection will be clear before issuing takeoff clearance to a plane in position waiting for takeoff from runway 4. We're all ready for push. I don't know if I'm more excited for the tight takeoff slots, the Bronx Climber flying to Lana. I love this, and I hope that you do too. 
My goal is to always make the flight experience more enjoyable by focusing on what's happening in the contextual environment in which we're operating. Who cares about the in-flight movie? We're about to enter the busiest airspace in the world and we'll be seeing Manhattan from above. And there's a lot to see on the ground too. Those old D-gates are still in use. Despite this being the brand new LaGuardia, did you know that some of the original D-terminal gates are still in use today? That's right, the airport reconstruction still isn't 100% complete yet, but this area will be going away soon. We've started our taxi under the control of the FAA's ground controller in the control tower, who has told us to take taxiways Alpha past Terminal B, then transition on taxiway Echo to taxiway Bravo, all the way to the beginning of our departure runway, runway 4. This part of the taxi is fast, but let's see what happens when we turn the corner. Not always, but generally the traffic around terminals C and B moves quickly, but once we turn the corner and transition on taxiway Echo, most of the departing flights have congregated here, so the lineup becomes long. After leaving the gate today, however, the lineup near the runway wasn't terrible because the tower was able to issue many aircraft takeoff clearance, one behind the other, because at times there were just less arriving flights. The departure lineup all depends on arrival demand. We're about to transition to taxiway Bravo on Echo near the American Airlines hangar, which looks like it's getting worked on, and we're passing by the FAA Air Traffic Control Tower, and I'm noticing something else noteworthy out there. I think it was Canyon Blue. That aircraft's got an interesting history. Canyon Blue is the name designated to November 536JB, an A320 registered to JetBlue. I've actually been a passenger on this exact plane in the past, but that's not what's the most interesting thing about this aircraft. This is perhaps JetBlue's most famous airplane because back in 2005, on a flight from Burbank to JFK, after takeoff, the landing gear could not be retracted and visual inspections of the aircraft from the ground found that the nose gear was rotated 90 degrees to the left. That's perpendicular. After a long time of troubleshooting, this plane diverted to LAX with its nose gear touching the runway with sparks and flames. The tires were worn down to the axle and the plane came to a stop on the runway. It was a safe landing, but perhaps what this incident is most famous for is the fact that JetBlue has live TV screens at each seat and passengers on board got to watch live news coverage of their own event as they were flying on the airplane. Eventually this airplane was repaired and returned to service and it's still flying strong today. Now back to this flight. We're slowly moving along nearing the runway, but we can only move when the line moves forward, and that only happens when a plane lines up on the runway. There are around six or seven planes ahead of us, and even though I can't see who's in front of the plane that I'm on, sitting on the left side of the plane affords me a clue about when we can move forward. You see, from here, I can see aircraft flying on the curved RNAV X-ray approach to runway 31 in their final left-hand turn to the runway. Knowing that the tower will only issue runway 4 departures takeoff clearance when one of the arrivals lands and clears the intersection, providing no one is too far behind, gives me a sense of when we'll be moving forward and when we'll be getting takeoff clearance because I can see how far spaced the arrivals are. This is one of the few airports in the world where the departure taxiway provides this vantage point due to the curved approach. There's a small plane on the ground here, but that's at Vaughn College, an aviation and engineering school across the street from the airport. And above Vaughn College, I can see more arrivals to LaGuardia. Vaughn College has an excellent observation tower where all of the LaGuardia action can be seen, including the entire path of the runway through and arrivals, as well as departing flights off of runway 4. During my time on Taxiway Bravo, I noticed good separation between arrivals, and I assume most of the arriving flights cleared runway 31 before the intersection with runway 4, and the line moved at a good rate, so we were cleared onto the runway quickly. If you find yourself in this scenario, always look out for the arrivals. It really helps you get a complete picture of how busy the airport is and why we often need to wait to take off. It's our time for takeoff, and with a sufficient gap between runway 31 arrivals, we won't even need to come to a stop on the runway. We're given takeoff clearance by the tower while still moving, and we start our roll on a 7,000 foot long runway 4 on a heading of 44 degrees. Airborne off of runway 4, allowing an arrival to land on runway 31. 
Our initial climb takes us past Rikers Island in the East River, which is home to the largest jail in New York City. Just like we saw when we were driving into the airport, we wait until we reach 500 feet, then turn left to the north, or 360 degrees, over the East River as we approach the mainland Bronx. There are three climbouts to runway four, and we're flying the one that leads most towards the west since we'll eventually have to make left turns to get southwest toward Lana. We're now under the control of a departure controller physically located in Westbury, New York, who watches us on the radar scope as we fly north of the Bronx. The controller clears us up to higher altitudes as passengers like me on the left side of the plane can see Manhattan and the Hudson River in the distance. Now that we're on the Bronx climb, the controller has to decide when it's appropriate for us to start a left-hand turn to proceed toward Lana, and that depends on demand for the fix. Lana is located over Everettstown, New Jersey, but it's not only used by LaGuardia departures. Flights from other airports, like Newark, headed the same way as us, can also use Lana, so the controller must see how many planes are also going to use Lana before we can turn. The controller is also carefully considering other traffic in the area to ensure that we're safely away from them. For example, departures from Newark, headed to the northeast, use the same airspace that we're in now. This is busy airspace. We're flying right up the middle of the Bronx, roughly following the path of the Bronx River, which splits the Bronx into eastern and western halves. From here, we can only see the western half of the Bronx, with Upper Manhattan, the Hudson River, and New Jersey in the distance. Passengers on the right side are afforded a view of the eastern side of the Bronx and Long Island Sound, with Long Island itself visible in the distance. Westchester County, the county north of New York City, is directly in front of us, but we won't be flying that far north. Today, demand for Lana is not too high, so we're asked to start an initial radar vector turn to the left, to the west, around the top end of Manhattan. In the next few minutes, you'll see why I strategically chose a seat on the left side of the plane. Not only will the view be great, but when left turns are made, sitting on the left side is always better since the wing dips to the left. Our new heading will point us directly over the Hudson River to New Jersey. This vector helps bring us closer to Lana, but we'll still have to be vectored further to the left to proceed more of a direct line toward Lana. This turn allows us to see nearly the entire outline of Manhattan Island, which is surrounded by the East, Harlem, and Hudson Rivers. Spanning the Hudson River is the George Washington Bridge, a double-decker suspension bridge with a length of 4,760 feet. That's 2,240 feet shorter than the runway we took off on. Further down the river are tunnels connecting New Jersey with Manhattan. Seeing on his radar scope that traffic is light to the south, the controller is ready to issue us another turn to the southwest. We're not cleared to Lana yet, but a left turn to the southwest points us right toward Lana. So when we are cleared to Lana, we might not even notice any turn at all. On this channel, I've been flying to the White intersection often, which brings us south towards southern New Jersey. But the problem with White is that often the controllers will vector us tight and sometimes we'll fly right over Manhattan, making it hard to see. Since Lana is further to the west than White, we will fly to the southwest, and we're guaranteed to be over New Jersey, so we'll never fly directly over Manhattan. That's why I chose Atlanta as my destination. Almost always, LaGuardia departures to Atlanta fly over Lana, securing a more comprehensive view of Manhattan while seated on the left side of the plane. And of course, the left side of the aircraft also affords a great view of LaGuardia. We've been cleared directly to Lana, and we have a view of Newark, New Jersey, and just past downtown Newark is Newark Liberty Airport. Notice how an aircraft is taking off on runway 4 left. That runway heads the same direction as runway 4 at LaGuardia, so you can see that Newark is experiencing a similar wind direction that LaGuardia is. We finally left the New York City area and are proceeding on course after flying over Lana. I was afforded a good view of Philadelphia with its very visible tall buildings, and that was followed by the Philadelphia International Airport. I'm so happy I sat on the left side of the plane for the best views possible. 
I've been seeing so many great things and that really was a great climb off Broadway 4. Now we're around the DC area and the look down revealed Washington Dulles International Airport. Let's fast forward a bit. After completing the in route phase of flight, we followed the Aussie 1 arrival from the northeast and approach control set us up for an approach to runway 26 right at Atlanta. With clearance to land at the airport's northernmost runway, we are near the end of our journey at the busiest airport in the world. your seat, ensure you have all your personal belongings before deplaning. As we reach our gate, TOA, we invite you to use the Flight Delta app for important baggage and connection information. Again, we are getting into gate T8. You may receive an email asking you to share your feedback. We value your feedback and use your responses to improve your future travel experience. On behalf of this amazing New York City base crew, thank you for choosing Delta. We look forward to seeing you soon. To get to gate T8 today, we'll be taking the Victor Loop, a taxiway that goes around the parallel runway in a loop that allows us to avoid crossing the runway by not just going around it, but also by descending below the level of the runway to avoid any low aircraft that might be flying past its extended center line. Of course, no aircraft should be that low at that point, but it's a great safety feature. This loop has been in existence for several years and recently has been duplicated on taxiway Whiskey around runway 9 left. This is extremely efficient because it allows us to go around a runway without having to cross it, creating no stops for us on the active taxiway system. Once we go around the loop, we head on over to gate 8 in the T concourse to finally complete this flight. That's November 301 Delta Victor behind me. I have a video about flying on that aircraft. That's Delta's very first E321. Don't forget to check out that video. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. While all passengers are excited that they've made it to Atlanta, including me, I'm even more excited that this flight flew to Lana, an en route destination in itself. Well, I'll be back again with more videos like this, so if you haven't done so already, click on that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on my next video. See you soon, everybody.